Pastor Bill Evans, Chetwin Fellowship Baptist Church, and uh, part of Chet TV, Marlon and Chris and Company uh, doing taping for messages to our community. Sharon, they're just the things of God to encourage hearts. And uh, I have noticed sometimes in the middle of the night, Chet TV, I turn flipping through the channels and I see Chet TV and there's somebody preaching or whatever. We're glad to be part of the program and to help uh, with this idea. We um, want to, today to just cover some thoughts about uh, Bible study. Um, I, they call me, uh, I'm a Baptist, we like to beat on our Bibles, and my Bible gets all beat up because we don't worship the book, we worship the one the book is about, and it gets all beat up, and my wife put a nice chamois cloth cover on there, did it up nice, and, um, but inside the book it says this, uh, Hear, O Israel, hear, O people of God, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. All your strength and such like he adds there. And he says, And these words which I command you shall are commanding you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them and do those things. I want to talk to you about such a thought. The word of God and its part in our in our lives. If we profess to be Christians, uh, it's supposed to have a part. We're supposed to read it. It's interesting. Um, Paul uses in 2 Timothy 2.15 about the study. Study to show yourself approved to God. And the word study, uh, there is uh, study with diligence. And the word diligence is an interesting Greek word. It's spudo. And from where we think we get speedo. Because it means be diligent to get at it. Get your speedo on and go do it. And uh, uh, so jump in. And so he says, to fulfill this Bible study idea, he wants you to be diligent and be diligent to apply yourself and whatever. In chapter 3 of that same book, 315, uh, 2 Timothy 315, he says, uh, the scriptures are able to make you wise unto salvation. God wants us to know how to walk through this world, whatever comes, uh, to know that he can save us, he can help us, uh, he can uh, just provide for us. Uh, I'm planning on retiring here soon, the good Lord willing, and if they get another preacher, then I'll be able to slow down some. Uh, I plan to let God take care of me. I, oh, I'm going to work here and there at the jail and wherever else, and, and what I'll do my part, but I have a promise from God to take care of me. And he says, so he says, if you read the Bible, you'll find yourself you're wise under salvation. You'll, you'll know how to be saved. You'll know how to be cared for. Uh, I was old, I was young, but now I'm old. And uh, Psalm 37 says, and I can say, I've never seen the righteous begging bread, or his descendants uh, begging bread, is, and, and, and never seen the righteous forsaken. God will take care of me is my trust, uh, and whatever. Why? Because I study my Bible, and I find these things to be true. And so Bible study 101 starts with this thought. The first thing is ask the author. Um, you ever get caught in a situation and somebody says, what did you mean by that? And somebody comes back, I heard that you said this. What did you mean by that? They've come back to the author. You're the author of that statement. They want to know what you meant by it. Well, when we come to Bible study, that is a great idea to do. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, the things of God are spiritually discerned. This book is to deal with encouragement physically in life. He'll supply all our physical needs. But he has a great interest in supplying our spiritual needs first. That in spirituality, we come and have a relationship with God through His Word and through His Son, Jesus. And as we do that, He says, these things are spiritually discerned. You want to read my, my, my regulations here or whatever? we got hunting regulations we use. we got electrical code book. we got books for building things and whatever. Guys are a little harder time, I understand, with that. And I heard of if, if something is going to take more than seven minutes to put together, most men won't have anything to do with it. That's an interesting statement. Uh, I get frustrated there. But he says, things of God are spiritually discerned. And you ask the author for help. John 8, 31, 32, Jesus makes this statement. If you will seek the truth, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. He gives that as a promise. I find that wonderful. That if I open up, I come to God, God, what is truth? That was asked by Pilate when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified. He says, Jesus talked about the truth. He says, what is truth? People don't know what the truth is, and they, they're more inclined to believe a lie than they are the truth. They make up their own things. They come to the Bible with their own ideas. Well, how am I going to find, how am I going to find in my Bible to prove what I believe? It doesn't matter what you believe is right or wrong. Jesus says, if you seek the truth, you really want the truth, you read the book, it'll jump right off the page, smack you in the face and say, here I am, ta-da, take it. So he says, if you will seek the truth, you'll know the truth. The truth will make you free. John 15, 26, 
talks about the Spirit of God. When you're asking God for help, uh, whatever, he says the Spirit will come and he will testify. He will take of the things of God and it'll make plain on the page what God wants you to know about Jesus. The scriptures are about Jesus beginning to end. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the Word. Jesus was called the Word of God. In the beginning in Genesis, in the beginning God. And the New Testament says that God was Jesus. John 16, verses 13 to 14, talking again about the Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. So now you've asked the author to help you. He says, my spirit will come. You're seeking the truth. I promise you I will give you the truth, and the truth will set you free. And um, he will testify about Jesus, and he will guide you into all truth, the truth that's important to know about Jesus. People say, that story of Jesus doesn't make sense. Ask God to help you. Guess what? All of a sudden, some lights come on. You're saying this, yeah. You're saying this and this, yeah. And it makes sense. And that's the work of the Spirit of God. So Bible study, start there by asking the author for help. And then the next thing is, is that we uh, should expect his help. Um, expect his help. Uh, Jesus uh, said to some other, the Jewish guys one time, um, if you believed on me, you would do the works of God. He's always arguing with the Pharisees, of the religious leaders of his day, about his, their relationship with God. Well, we, we study the Bible all the time. Well, Jesus says, if you studied the Bible all the time, guess what? You would love me. And he said, you study the Bible and you hate me. You say, I'm not who I'm supposed to be. I'm not the son of God. I, that can't be or whatever. I fit all the criteria that you know is true about the prophecies. But he says, you say you love God. You search the scriptures. Oh, you've got to let me into heaven, God, because I know my Bible really well. Jesus makes a statement. He says, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, I did all these things. And they say, depart, because I didn't really know you. You knew my book, but you didn't know the person of the, who gave you the book. Uh, you, you kept reading the love letter, but you didn't catch fall in love with the person it was from. And so there is God. Um, the first thing, ask the author for help, and then expect his help. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me, and you'll find rest for your souls. And you can expect his help. Psalm 119 is the longest psalm in the Bible, longest chapter in the Bible. 176 verses. We're not going to read them all today. But you can. And, uh, and here we have in verse 97, when we read the word of God, this is what he says. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day long. Meditation is a big thing in society. Meditation is good to do. Meditate on the right things. Meditation where you just open your brain up to whatever uh, you invite all kinds of stuff in there. You, you want to be real careful. God says, you meditate upon my word. Oh, how I love your law. It's my meditation. I spend time. My sermons come out of my meditation on the word of God that I read. I expect his help. Meditation, thinking upon it is really good. So verse 98 says this, your commandments make me wiser than my enemies. A little friend um, got a parking ticket. And I says, I'll pray that God will help you because she was kind of poor student. And uh, I said, I will pray that somehow somebody sends you the money to cover the ticket or you find it in a pocket or something in your glove box or something like this. And she says, she calls me grandpa. She says, grandpa, can you just pray? Can you just pray that I stop doing goofy things that cost me money? Just pray that I stop doing, your commandments make me wiser than my enemies. The devil wants you to be robbed. The devil wants you to feel bad, all those things. And he says, uh, she says, just pray that I would not do dumb things. And that's such an important thought there. Verse 99 of 117 says, I have more insight than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. Guess what, you young people? If you follow the word of God, you can be smarter than your teachers. There's, you know, the teachers got education and all those kind of things. But it's just sometimes you'll have an angle that they haven't thought of or whatever. You might find it that with the help of God, you can remember stuff and do stuff on your exams and whatever. Uh, surprise your teachers. All those things are possible. But he says, how does that come about? I have more, more insight than my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. And, and so God promises you can expect his help if you ask him when you come to study uh, his word. Uh, ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be open to you. All those things are applicable to our time in studying the Word of God. That's the first thing. First, ask for help of the author. Expect his help. The next thing is, when come to your Bible, 
It's really, really important that you read carefully. Read it carefully. Find a version that you can understand. Some people have argued there's argument in theology and in churches around the country. King James Bible only. It was good enough for the Apostle Paul. It's good enough for, for the church today. It's a strange argument that seems to be only the English get the Bible. Everybody in the world gets the Bible in their language except the English. We get this old English, hard to understand. Majestic, very nice, yes. You round it a bunch, you can really do it. But a simple version of the Bible. Read it carefully and you will find that your heart will be blessed. So read it carefully. Psalm 119, 103, look at what it says there. It says, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How many of you ever just take a scoop of honey, put it in your mouth, swallow real fast? Well, if you're trying to soothe something in your throat, you might, but generally you put honey in your mouth because you want to enjoy the taste. Let it get around to all your taste buds, on your tongue and back of your tongue and everywhere. You want the taste of honey. And he says here, Lord, how sweet are your words to my taste. Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. And um, uh, so God wants us just to enjoy the word of God. Come and you'll find the blessings. Where there's, and say, he'll show you where to walk and how to walk and blessings of walking in, in, in care with him as we ask him for his help. The next thing is, use a version so that you can understand. And uh, do not be, I wrote an article in the newspaper one time. The only authorized version is the one you will use. The one you will use. If you got one you're not using, just a dust collector, that's not an authorized version. Use the one that you will read and let your heart be blessed. Um, so we, we give here, pay, give attention. Paul told young Timothy, give attention to reading. Read often. Even if, only if you only read a little bit every day. We have a daily bread book around the church we give them out. And just a little passage of scripture, a little story goes with it. Read and pay attention. Read it carefully. First Timothy 3, 14, 17 talks about the Holy Scriptures, which make you wise unto salvation. And, uh, I, you know, I was out of a broken home, and my parents were divorced and whatever. And when I became a following Jesus in Sunday school and stuff, I got to run across a verse. And it says, when father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take care of me. That's been a verse that blessed my heart all my life, uh, from being a young child, a young person. Uh, when father and mother forsake you, the Lord will take care of me. I found that to be true. And then find a trusted commentary. Um, this story in the New Testament, the, the Pentecost has happened. The disciples are going out into the world. Uh, there's a guy named Philip, sees a guy in a chariot, hears, walks up beside him and listens to him reading something out of the Old Testament. And he says, sir, do you understand what you're reading? And the guy says, how can I unless somebody explain to me that um, what, what's going on? How can I? And he says he climbed up into the chariot with the guy, stopped the chariot, climbed up, sat with him, and explained to him what he was reading out of Isaiah, way back in the Old Testament, was all about Jesus. How can you unless somebody help you? That's why going to church is important. You go to church, pastor shares the word of God. If he doesn't share the word of God, you might as well go to another church. Go someplace where the Bible is the word of God and it's shared and whatever. But how can you without somebody? Find a trusted commentary. There's books. Find some that sometimes, no, this is the way it is, no other thinking. No, if, if you find a commentary, it gives you two or three ideas. But he says, I think this one makes the most sense. Those passages like that need that kind of treatment. Find a trusted commentary. And then the best commentary is somebody like Matthew 17. We have Jesus there talking. And he says there, he says, um, let me just close with this. And, and he says these words, uh, he says, and his disciples asked him, says, when did this, why did the scribes say Elijah must first come? And he says, and he answered and said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah already came and they did not recognize him, but they did to him whatever they wished. So also the son of man is going to suffer at their hands. And then the disciples understood that he spoke to them about John the Baptist. They asked the author, for a commentary on what it was said. And Jesus gave him the answer. You want to study your Bible? Ask the author for help. Expect his help. Get some help from others, pastors at church and whatever. And may your heart be blessed. Amen.